Begin it with the Bismillah. This is the Dean Show Radio Show. My brother. My brother. And with me on the airwaves, we are talking to our brother. Brother, are you there? Brother Musay. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you, brother? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah, and how are you? Sounding nice, crisp, and clean, clear. You're all the way in Medina, is that right? Yes, that's true, alhamdulillah. I'm here in the holy city of Medina. Now, what are you doing there? Are you making, uh, what, are you on the uh, Umrah, or are you, you're there studying? What's going on? Tell us why you're in Medina. Actually, that's exactly what it is. Uh, I've been here as a student studying the religion of Islam for about eight years, so I'm just continuing that, and... Insha'Allah, hopefully finishing very, very soon. Insha'Allah. Masha'Allah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What encouraged you to go ahead and travel all the way to Medina to pursue your studies? Well, to be honest with you, about 10 years ago, I started to develop an interest in the religion of Islam. I started to learn more, I started to attend lectures, and I started to see that there was a whole new side, a whole new beauty in this religion that I was never exposed to. And uh, as a result, I wanted to develop some kind of religious background, some kind of understanding of who I was. I was a Muslim, I've always been a Muslim, but I never really understood what that meant and how to implement that in my life and how to affect those around me being a Muslim. So I decided that this was an opportunity that I had in front of me to apply, to receive a scholarship, and come all the way to the blessed city of Medina where the scholars are sitting, they're teaching, the knowledge is here, and I just thought it was a perfect opportunity that I could come, sacrifice some time away from my family, and be here and just study. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So just developing a strong religious background, understanding my religion, this is probably the sole purpose of why I wanted to come here. Now, what's the specialty that you engrossed yourself in? There are different fields. What's the one that you are concentrating on out there? Well, the one that I'm concentrating on, alhamdulillah, is the study of belief in Allah, knowing who is Allah, understanding the names and the attributes and how to implement them and how important they are in our lives and how we can use them to live a better life in this world and gain Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward in the akhirah. So this is where I'm specializing in. So there not, o- not only are you having the academic knowledge at the university, but do you also outside of the university get to sit with some of the top scholars and get to pick their brains? Oh yeah, no doubt. Over here, they've taught us in school, in the university, a very important principle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's absolutely beautiful for someone to understand how we separate our studies with the scholars and our studies in school. And they teach us that in school, we give you the tools to understand what the scholars will teach you outside. Because as we all know, scholars, it's really not from their nature to start teaching us from basic basic Islamic studies. This is not from their nature. They are much more advanced than that. Mm-hmm. And this is what they concentrate on. But us as students of knowledge, we got to learn the Arabic, so we go to school. We got to learn the principles and the terms of every subject and field, so we go to school for that. And that helps us to sit with the scholars and, as you said, we pick their brains. <laughs> it's like a kid in a candy store. That's exactly what it is. Exciting, exciting. Now, we want to pick your brain and we have, as we always do, we encourage people to visit thedeanshow.com. And then we have our new blog section. We have a little box there that people can click on and leave some of their suggestions for shows they'd like for us to cover. And p- many people have been leaving some questions and some topics. And one of these questions is coming from a sister who used to be living And we're going to paraphrase what she's saying, and then we'll discuss this. She talks about how she was living in the days of Jahaliya, days of ignorance. And that really wasn't going too well. She was able to do her own thing, quote unquote. She was free, as they say, free to do what you want. But you know what? She was feeling the ramifications of this, the heaviness on her heart and her soul. So she changed her life around. She repented to the one who created her. 
and she started to change her life around, but it seems like she's got some luggage from the past. She's got something from the past. She used to live with an individual. She hooked up with a Hindu guy, and now she left him alone, but then she felt, as she's saying in her letter, that she felt bad. She said, you know what? Maybe I should give him some dawa. Maybe I should now, since... I, instead of just leaving him be, I can try to explain what Islam is to him. And where they came along was that he agreed that there is only one God, she's saying in her mail, email. But he won't. She told him that because they used to live together, as I said, she will not he marry him until he accepts Islam. But he agrees to the principles of Islam, but he won't do it because... He fears the outlash from his parents and community. So then she let him be. But now, as she is saying, that she feels very sad to feel what he's going through. I guess he's crying to her and he's begging her to come back. So she's like, what can she do now? She feels like so like depressed about this that she might have trapped him. She might have let him on so she's kind of seems like a test now what from what i'm saying what advice can we give to the sister and we can kind of discuss this because these are real issues in the real world we're living in okay as always and forever i begin by stating that there is no god or deity worthy of any type of worship but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i further testify that the prophet muhammad peace be upon him, is his servant and final messenger. As far as this question goes, this is a very typical situation that many of the youngsters, and in some cases, some of the adults go through throughout their lifetime. Yeah. And everyone, literally everyone at some point will have something in their past, as you mentioned, some kind of luggage that they would want to remove in order to live that clean and pure, obedient life to the Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this case here, the sister, she needs to understand a number of points. The first point here is probably the most important one, which is that guidance is not in the hands of human beings. Mm -hmm. Regardless whether they are Muslim or not, Guidance is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself decides. And one of the strongest examples of this is when you go back to the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He had his uncle. His uncle was like a father to him. He loved his uncle more than anything else in this world. And when his uncle was dying in his hands, he tried to give guidance to his uncle. He tried to give him da'wah. He tried to get him to say the shahada and still his uncle, no matter how much he loved the Prophet wasallam, treated him like his own son and gave him precedence over all the other children. Still, he did not testify that to the religion of Islam. And what did Allah say? Allah revealed the verse, O Muhammad, you can't guide the people that you love. All you can do is give them a message, call them to this religion. However, as far as guidance is concerned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is him who decides if somebody is going to be guided to the straight path or not. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this brother or this person here, the fact that he only testifies to part of the religion, as you mentioned, as the questioner mentions, that he agrees there is one God. This is wonderful. However, it is not enough to be a Muslim. So we can't say, we can't even say that this person is half a Muslim because there's no such thing. Allah says, enter the religion completely and wholeheartedly. And so unless that happens, no one can be considered a Muslim. Don't, don't, don't most people, they agree what's in their very nature, but doesn't it take that courage to live that, what you believe inside? But now many people, like it seems like he is because of his parents and the fear of the outlash of his parents and community, he'll suppress that. It seems like this is what she's saying, that he believes there's one God, but he can't come out openly and say that it's Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, because he fears his family. Right. And this is going to now raise another issue. 
if he does accept Islam, now he has his parents, how strong can he be in front of his parents? How strong can he handle all the animosity or hatred that he might deal with throughout the community? This all goes back to a sincerity of a person. As long as a person has sincerity in their heart, that no matter what, they will sacrifice whatever they can for the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is accepted. Even if it means that the parents go against you, they treat you differently, they start to hate you. This is something that Allah says in Surah Luqman, that you are to obey your parents, treat them with kindness and respect in all aspects except in one area, which is if they tell you to do anything that is disobedient or causes the hatred of Allah upon you, then you stop right there. So you obey, so this, you obey your parents except when they call you to disobey the one who created you? Yes, so you obey your parents when they tell you, you know, be kind to me, let's go out, come clean up your room, all the daily life things that we experience with our parents, you obey them, you treat them kindly, you love them, you buy them gifts, you do all the normal things. However, when it comes time to pray five times a day, if your parents say, listen, I don't want you to pray five times a day, leave that for later, this is where you disobey your parents. Gotcha. Because Let's Allah comes first. Allah, the Creator, comes first. Let's hold it right there. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with our brother all the no way from Medina on the show, radio show. You might be going through Have a little bit of patience And you know you might just see it through Just like the colors of the rainbow It can brighten up your day Just keep your faith in Him And give Him thanks and praise He is the maintainer he is the preserver He is the one who provides us with shelter He is the provider He is the protector He is the one who protects us from hunger He is the maintainer He is the preserver He is the one who provides us with shelter He is the provider He is the protector you have to pray as if everything depends on Allah and it does. But you must work as if everything depends on you and it doesn't. That's my point. You see what I'm saying? Man? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When they're going to come? They're going to come. Allah going to bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job. Assalamu alaikum. Back with our brother. And we are talking and trying to cover an email that we got from a sister. So those that are following along, this is something... In an ideal society, brother, what happens? Man comes with woman together the way the Creator wants him to come together in marriage. None of this fooling around, none of this test driving. What does Islam say? How do man and woman, how is a man supposed to be with a woman and a woman supposed to be with a man? And I said man and woman, not man and man, woman with woman. So let's clear all this up. What's the natural way that they're supposed to, because there is something inside a man that he wants to be with the woman. So how do they, and the woman wants to be with the man, how do they do it the right way, God's way? Well, the right way is only one way in which Allah himself describes in the Quran in various places. But perhaps one of the most important areas is the ayah in Surat Ar-Rum. Allah says that he has taken a male and a female and put between them mercy and love in order that they can come together and be married, in order that they can come together and fall in love and live a life that is obedient to Allah. Now, how do we know what that obedient way is? Same thing in the Quran and furthermore in the, the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, something we call nikah or marriage. Now, before it even reaches that stage, a lot of people want to know, well, how do I get to know my partner? Yeah, yeah, talk how to us about this. How do I talk to him and get to, get to him? So to get to know that person, it has to be done in a very constructive manner. There are rules that the Sharia has given us 
to do this in order that the shaitan does not come between these two people and cause them to do things that are haram. So by emailing or by talking on the phone very briefly as well as even having a third party present in order to make sure that shaitan is not the third party but it's actually another human being who is knowledgeable, who is strong in the religion, who understands it and is able to keep control within two people. These are some of the things that the sharia has given us that we allow each other to get to know each other and speak and so on in a constructive environment. Invite each other to each, uh, to each other's families' homes, have people there, discuss the issues of marriage and so on and the future and what lies ahead. It's done in a constructive manner. The most important point here is to know it is never done alone between the man and the woman. Because let's and, face it, is, is yeah. this, we live in, in the 21st century and you being a man, me being a man, we know mm -hmm. kind of how the man thinks, huh? Isn't right. that correct? So, of I mean, course. to give some advice, you know, we bring it down and we keep it real. What is the man's agenda? Because a man can have some beautiful rhetoric and he can have a nice speech and he can talk about this and that. And honey, let me finish school and then I'll buy you the world. And they're writing songs about this. You know, I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the heavens and the earth, you know, for your eyes and this and that. And next thing you know, she's left on the curb because she got used and abused because she fell for those fancy lyrics that he was spitting out of his mouth. And the creator doesn't want her to fall in this kind of trap. In this case, we go back to the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh -huh. You see, once you follow the religion and once you follow the sunnah, everything is clear. The Prophet, peace be upon him, gave us the ingredients of what to look for in a person. So this way you don't fall for the beautiful lyrics, you don't fall for the beautiful gifts, you don't fall for the charm and so on and so forth. You look for the four main characteristics of a person. Once you see these four main char characteristics, everything is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's control and inshallah there's good in it. So of course the first one is you look at the beauty of that person. Secondly, you look at the status, where they come from. Thirdly, you look at their lineage. What kind of family do they have? Do they have a sincere family? And the fourth, which is the most important one, is you look at how sincere they are in the religion of Islam. Once you follow this criteria, once you follow this recipe in choosing a partner, never will a man or a woman fall subject to the beautiful lyrics and charm that happens between couples. Too many ramifications, you know, people come together the wrong way, and then you got heartbreak, you got that negative outcome that comes. You have STDs, you have illegitimate children, you have all sorts of evil and corruption that's scattered. The family core that is supposed to be preserved, this is something now that the right of the child that comes into the world, he doesn't have his mother and father now. People aren't thinking about the future, they're not thinking about doing it the right way, they do it the wrong way, and now all these ramifications that come are, 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 are destructive, isn't it? Absolutely, and this is the result, the sole result of someone who is not trying their best or not putting the effort to follow their religion. The moment you stay away from what Islam teaches you, what the sunnah and the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, teaches you, then these are the consequences that happen. These are ramifications everyone deals with. Tell this is what happens. Tell us, yep. brother, so what would you advise this sister now? Would Is it, I'm thinking, you tell me, we discussed this, should she just move along and try to find someone who is deeply rooted in the worship of the one true God, in the God of Abraham, Moses, Jesus Christ, and the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the, son, the, the, the creator who created the sun and the moon, that God, a, a person who's devoted himself and so she doesn't have to have this drama. So she just leave off the past and look brightly towards the future? Absolutely. And this is the whole purpose of leaving a past, is you actually leave what is behind you, behind you. You leave it there. And you try to look for that which is better. And this, for this sister, we want her to realize that, as we mentioned earlier, guidance is just from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, that she should if she tries her very best to leave off something which there is wrong or evil in it for the sake of Allah, 
then Allah promises, this is in the Quran, Allah promises that He will give her something which is better for her. Mm -hmm. and, as, and as Allah says, sometimes there are things, and this is in Surah Baqarah, the, the second chapter of the Quran. Allah says that sometimes things may appear beautiful in front of you, but there really is evil in it. And then sometimes there are things that are evil, but there are actually beautiful things in it. But it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that knows what is best for you. How do you get the best? You stick to your religion, move on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her someone that is pleasing to him, to her, and to the religion of Islam. Tell us, is it, because we kind of know the psychology of people from doing some studies and, you know, sharing the experiences, listening to the experiences. Now, I have a little experience and I've seen this come around on why. And tell me what you think. The man, he's on the, he's chasing her now. It's, it says in the email that he's crying and he's like trying to get her back. And she's like distancing, distancing herself. So when, when you run, the dog chases, doesn't he? She's running and the dog chases. So he's chasing, not literally dog. You know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's, right. she's giving him a, a hard time. Uh, she's being a hard catch now. But once he gets her and she's trapped now, he's got what he wanted, the situation can change now. Now it's going to lead towards the, the, the worst. He's got what he wanted, and now she might uh, fall into uh, the, 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 the sinful things, going back with him, and then forgetting about her purpose in life, living a life of worshiping the one God and following all the beautiful injunctions that he's told her to live by. So it's a, it's a dangerous thing that her like playing around thinking like maybe i can change him i can give him some dawah and and being alone with him and then you know the man dominates the relationship and he can dominate the whole thing and then her whole deen is gone absolutely and this is what allah speaks about this in the quran that the men they do have this sense of control to a certain extent that they can win over the women with either their words with either their money whatever the case is and this is a classic example of a man who knows how to break down a woman. Yeah. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that women, they are precious, they are fragile, so treat them as such. They are precious and fragile, so treat them as such, meaning that words can really affect a woman. Words can really enter their hearts because women, they think they understand, they ponder, they will sleep on words for days and days and it will affect them. So for this sister, she is to try her very best to be strong and not to lose sight of the ultimate goal, which is, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala she pleases first before herself, before this person. With this criteria, inshallah, she will be able to make a proper decision, keep herself on the straight path. Somebody said, somebody says, you know what, we're living in the 21st century. Let them just love each other. You know what, they love each She He loves her. She loves him. Doesn't matter what he believes, she believes. Let them just go together. Hold hands and, and go ahead and make love childs, you know, and just be together. It sees the moment. We're, we're living in today's right. times. You're coming from some backward culture. What do you got to say about this? Well, it's very simple. We just stick to the basics. We stick to our belief. The Sharia, ah, the laws of Allah never change. From since day one that they came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent it for us, it has never changed. It is perfect for all generations, all times, all nations, all people. The Sharia ah will never change for the people, but it is the people that have to adjust to accompany the Sharia. Ah to follow the rules of Allah. And so the rules are exactly stated the way they are. And we can't change them. We can't say, well, let's just bend the rules, hold hands and do these things. Because the Sharia has prevented us from doing that and has told us that this will lead us to a road that is displeasing to Allah. And a side point here is this is exactly how the shaitan, the Satan himself works. And Allah says so in the Quran that the shaitan will take all the bad things in this world all the sins, all the disbelieving acts, the disobedient acts, and beautify them. Make them look harmless. Make them look as though they don't, it's not doing nothing for me. If I hold their hand, so what? This is all from the shaitan. And so a person must make sure as they have to keep a strong faith, 
stick to what the books, stick to what the Quran and the Sunnah teach us, and they will never be able, they will never have this problem. Whatever somebody comes and says, hey man, just relax, enjoy life, and so on and so forth, person should realize that we have rules. We have rules and guidance that we need to follow in to have an enjoyable life. So maybe no that, that, that person hasn't come to the realization. She's been blessed now. She knows that, look, there is a creator who created me. He's the most wise. He loves me the most. And he knows what's best. So I'm going to live life right. according to how he wants me to live. The other person, we hope that he gets guided too. But until he does, it's best that she hooks up with someone who's going to be more of a positive role model in her life. Absolutely. And this is an optimistic way of looking at this, is that the sister should be very thankful to the creator that the Creator has put some sort of concern into her heart. And she didn't just deal with this situation in a blind, blindful manner. Because she could have easily just said, well, you know what? I don't care. He's still a human being. I love him. He loves me. That's the end. But somehow in her heart, there is some faith. Somehow Allah still kept some goodness in her heart that she stopped. She wrote a question. She sent it. And she's trying to find a proper answer. This is something she should be very proud of and to work with that until she reaches the end. So she's already taken the first step to doing exactly what is correct. For our non-Muslim audience and for some Muslims who aren't really firmly embedded in the deen, in this way of life, the way of life of all the messengers of God, the way of total submission to the one who created you. Now tell us, what comes to my mind to help people understand is... Can we compare it to someone, let's say, who's trying to get straight A's in school, someone who's trying to graduate with honors because they see that if they do, they will have a prestigious career. Now the other person is cutting class. The other person is not taking class seriously. They're not taking their responsibility seriously. And now that woman who's trying to get straight A's and trying to be successful because if she's successful and passes school, with the right company that's encouraging her, she can make it and be successful in life. But if she follows the people and the company, the bad company, it'll take her down and she'll be a loser and then her future will be ruined. Well, in this case, right, when we're looking at friends and company and the people who are around, the, the religion itself... And when we say the religion, as you mentioned, we're talking about from the time of Adam, peace be upon him, until the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon Same him. Same way of life, right? Same way of life. Who you choose to have company as will either, tr will either direct you to an honest, clean life or would direct you to a destructive life. Yes. So if you choose a friend that is going to encourage you to read, to study, to pass, to pray, to fast, and do all the correct things, that's the path that you're going to be chosen. That's the path you're going to be following. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times, the company that you choose to have, they are going to be the result of what path you take. And, if, and the same thing with the, the opposite. If you choose a friend now that smokes, that drinks, that fails, that can never pass a subject, cutting class, wasting time, then there's a nine out of ten chance that that person, the friend that you chose, you're going to follow that same path. Mm -hmm. And this is what Allah in the Quran says. This perfect religion has touched every single aspect of our lives. Allah says that these same people, they will come on the day of judgment, biting their fingers. Because why? They chose friends that were of no benefit to them, that didn't bring any good out of their life, only caused corruption in the world and the people around them. So they'll bite their fingers in fear what is Allah going to do with that person? What is God going to do with this person? So for this case here, who you choose will determine what path you take. Exactly. So that's what the advice that we're giving the sister is to be around righteous company. People who are on the same wavelength, who are trying to achieve the same goals, who are trying to worship the one God the way he wants to be worshipped and following the game plan that he sent down through his last and final messenger. Is that the way to be successful? Absolutely. And Eddie, I'll tell you one thing. The number one way, and the scholars here speak about this extensively, the number one way for a person to keep faith in their heart and in their lives is to choose proper friends, to choose proper company. Your company will literally be able to determine what path you take because the support will be there either to do good or bad. 
the encouragement will be there either to do good or bad. So who you choose as company to be around will determine what path you take. So this is the most effective way for the sister to come out of the situation and inshallah have a better life. Be because when you do have a God-fearing man, a person that loves God, he fears God, he is in reverence of the one who created him, he knows that the creator is all seeing, all hearing, so he's going to be extra careful. You won't have to worry about this man committing adultery on you, one weekend being at the nightclub, say, hey, honey, I'm going to go have a few drinks with the friends. And then he's drunk and then he goes and cheats on you. And then you got some uh, person, you got to hire a private eye to follow this man and all the drama. You avoid all this, right? When you do it the wholesome way, you do it the right way. And then you got someone who's righteous. You live a righteous life. And then you have that peace and tranquility. You don't got to wor worry about all this tabloid drama. Absolutely. It's a protection. That's what it is. You're actually protecting yourself by choosing a proper spouse, uh, choosing a proper co uh, companion. You're protecting your honor. You're protecting your religion. You're protecting your hijab. You're protecting everything that is important to you and to the Creator. So why, by choosing a proper and pious person, a pious partner, this is going to determine the kind of life that you live. And we see it all the time in t today in our day and age that women and men will marry someone because they looked so beautiful to their eyes or they had so much money or such an amazing, beautiful job. And once these two people sat down, began their life, got a home and really start to live life one-on-one -on -one with each other, then they started to see the results of their decision. They chose every single thing except religion and now they start to pay the penalty mm -hmm. by living in an unhappy life all of a sudden you see the daughter one day she says you know what i want to take off my hijab and the husband says to her well i have no problem with that you look beautiful so and that's the path she ends up going and so this is the case who you choose will determine what kind of life you live choose a good person you will live a good life choose a disobedient person this is what the path that is that, that will end up for you and we're striving to be successful, not only in this life, but we will die and then there's a hereafter. And we want to get Absolutely. to paradise. We want to Absolutely. be in the most righteous company. And that is in Jannah. And tell us some closing comments and suggestions for this sister and everyone else who's listening before we close. Well, to the sister and to all of our listeners, I advise everyone that whenever you choose a partner, Go to the sunnah, to one hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, one tradition of his life, and gave us the four ingredients, the recipe on how to choose a partner. Look for that beauty, because it's important to be attractive to your partner. Look for that status. It's important to know what position that person has in the community. Is he liked? Is he loved? Or is she liked and loved? Do the people look at her as, you know, an evil person, a liar, a backbiter, and so on and so forth? What's her behavior like? The third ingredient is to look into the family of that person. What kind of parents do they have? What kind of family and upbringing did they have? Were they in Islam? Were they in religion? Were they a praying family or were they the complete opposite? And the fourth and final ingredient, the ingredient for all of mankind when choosing a partner, this is the most important one. Number four is to choose a person for the sake of religion. Once you see a man and a woman abiding to the rules of this religion, rules of Islam, the rules that have been brought down from since Adam, peace be upon him, all the way to the last and final messenger, once you see a person is God-fearing in this manner, realize that this is the best person that is for you once you see these four characteristics and the rest inshallah with the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come easy Brother, so this is the advice thank you very much that's some great advice that you live and you strive to do it the right way god's way that's it yes and thank you Absolutely. very much for being with us we look forward to having you back on the show Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My pleasure. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that was our brother helping us answer the question for our dear sister. Dear sister, I hope that you get to listen to this and that you make the right decisions in life.
as we hope that all human beings do. We hope that everyone who is listening from this can benefit. And we make it simple for the people so they can understand. It's imperative, as we had mentioned, that it's crucial that if we want to get good grades, we give an example so you can understand it a little bit better. If you want to get good grades, if you want to get A's, you better hang around with A students. You don't want to hang around with people who are smoking dope, cutting class, cursing the teacher. No, it won't work like that. Likewise, if you want to be successful not only in this life, but also in the next, then you better be serious. You better take this life as your one shot for the next. Next meaning paradise. So you need to be around and with people who are seeking the same destination, people who are righteous and who bring you up and not down. Not people who every time you want to bring up a conversation about the one who created you, the creator, and all the wonderful blessings he's given us and how we should be thankful to him and him alone. They suddenly want to change the topic saying, I got more important things to think about. I don't have time for this. Now, this is especially especially important when it comes to a future soulmate, a spouse, your dream husband or your dream wife. You want to live that way of life that's logical, rational, coherent, that way that's innately, inherently, inborn inside all of us. We call it the natural way, the way that when you live it, you live your true purpose in life. Now, how are you going to be gambling your future away and live that life with someone who's avidly seeking only the pleasure of this life and takes the matter of death as something trivial, takes the matter of paradise and hellfire, the day of judgment, as something from Hollywood or Bollywood? And takes the matter of acquiring peace by submitting to the one God alone as something that I don't just have time for, but would rather follow his or her lusts and desires and live a heedless life. Not being thankful at all for all the wonderful blessings that we've been given. Be thankful, sister, that the Creator has guided you to the straight way. And we ask you to share this program with all your friends and family. You can find this program on our blog section, the T H E D E E N show.com is where you find our TV programs, but the radio programs are in the blog section and the rest of the archive of shows that we have, they are downloadable. Go ahead, download it for your podcasts, for your iTunes, for your CDs, so you can bump it in your ride. That's right. Invite everyone to what will give them peace and serenity in life is this way of life. And we'll see you next time. God willing, peace be unto you. He created the universe. To Him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever-living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent his messengers To warn his creatures Of the grave dangers Of worshipping other than Allah There is none greater and the Creator, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There is none greater than the Creator, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
The prophet say submit to him alone Whether you're rich or young